In this video, we're going to introduce some very basic concepts relative to creating electrical circuits, applying power to them, and making some simple measurements. Specifically, we'll introduce solderless breadboards as a way of interconnecting circuit elements and the use of a digital multimeter to make basic measurements. We'll also use the analog discovery as a power source in this video. You may want to watch the quick start video relative to the voltage instrument for relevant background information. First, we'll talk about solderless breadboards. A solderless breadboard is typically a large white plastic component with rows of holes in it. The terminals of electrical components, for example, this resistor, can easily be pushed into the breadboard holes. This can allow us to use the breadboard to interconnect circuit elements in order to create electrical circuits. Breadboards typically have rows of five holes which are all electrically connected into a single circuit node. The holes always have the same voltage. Any two rows of holes are electrically isolated from one another. There is also a central groove in the breadboard which separates the holes on either side of this groove. So the rows of holes on this side are electrically isolated from the rows on this side. This channel won't be important to us for now, but it will become useful later when we create circuits containing integrated circuit chips packaged as dual inline packages or DIPs. Suppose I want to create the simple resistive circuit shown here. The circuit consists of two interconnected resistors. They are connected at these terminals here. A 5 volt source is used to apply power across these two resistors. To connect the two resistors, I can simply plug two of their terminals into two holes which are in the same row. These two terminals are now electrically connected. Their other terminals can be plugged into any two holes which are not in the same rows. To apply power to the circuit, I can use my analog discoveries V plus at one of the unconnected terminals and ground at the other. Next, let's talk about digital multimeters, which are commonly referred to as DMMs. DMMs are an extremely useful general purpose tool. They perform several types of measurements. Most DMMs will measure voltages, currents, resistance, and usually a number of other parameters, such as capacitance. DMMs come in a variety of shapes, sizes, and have a wide range of prices and capabilities. In this video, we'll be using the handheld DMM, which is available for purchase on Digilent's website. Since DMMs perform a variety of functions, we have to select the specific function we want to perform. On this DMM, our function selection is accomplished with a knob on the front of the DMM. Also, we need to physically connect the DMM to our circuit with leads. Leads come in a variety of forms. These probe type leads come with the DMM on Digilent's website. With probe type leads, the connection is made by simply touching the probes to the desired locations in the circuit. Personally, I prefer to use leads with alligator clips attached. This way I can connect the leads to the circuit and still have my hands free for other activities. Leads with alligator clips are available at most electronic stores. There are several holes on the DMM into which the leads can be inserted. The type of measurement you are making dictates the way you connect the leads to the DMM. We'll talk more about this later. Now let's talk about measuring constant voltages using a digital multimeter. In order to measure a constant voltage, first twist the dial until the indicator lines up with the V with a bar over it. We also need to connect our leads to the appropriate holes in the DMM. To measure a voltage, insert one lead into the COM port and the other lead into the port labeled with a V and typically an ohm symbol. There may be other symbols on this port as well. We won't worry about them yet. As we've seen in the lecture and textbook material, voltages have a polarity. The polarity provides a sign convention as to which terminal is at the higher voltage. If you don't understand the assumed polarity of the DMM leads, you cannot understand your measurements or compare them to expectations. On the DMM, the terminal labeled COM, short for common terminal, is the assumed negative terminal. The terminal labeled volt ohm is the assumed positive terminal. It's customary to use a red lead for the positive terminal and a black lead for the negative terminal. If the positive lead of the DMM is connected to the higher voltage in a circuit and the COM terminal is connected to a lower voltage, the voltage difference displayed will be positive. If the leads are reversed so that the COM terminal is at the higher voltage, the displayed voltage will be negative. Reversing the leads simply changes the sign on the displayed voltage. To illustrate this, let's measure some voltage differences in the simple resistive circuit we created earlier. To apply power to the circuit, open the voltage instrument on the waveform software and turn V plus on. 
Now we can measure voltages in our circuit by connecting the DMM leads across the component whose voltage difference we want. For example, the voltage difference across this resistor is about 1.6 volts. If we switch the polarity of the leads, the sign of the voltage changes and we read negative 1.6 volts. The voltage across both resistors is simply the voltage of the source, approximately 5 volts. Now let's talk about measuring constant currents using a DMM. In order to measure a current, we not only have to select a different function with the DMM dial, but we also need to reconfigure the DMM leads and, in general, modify our circuit. To select an ammeter function, twist the dial until the indicator lines up with the A with a bar over it. We also need to configure our leads for a current measurement. To do this, one lead is inserted into the COM port and the other lead is inserted into one of the ports labeled A or micro A or milli A. The circuit itself will also need to be changed in order to measure a current. We need to connect the ammeter to the circuit so that all of the current which is to be measured passes through the ammeter. Let's say that we want to measure the current through the resistors in our previous circuit. An ammeter measures the current that passes through it. In order to measure the current through either resistor, we must make sure that the resistor's current also passes through the DMM. To do this, we need to break open our circuit and place the ammeter probes between the first and second resistors. Now we need to talk a little bit about the sign convention associated with current direction. In our circuit schematic, positive current is going this direction. In terms of the DMM current measurement, assumed positive current enters the A terminal and leaves the COM terminal. Therefore, in order for our measured current direction to agree with the direction of the current I on our schematic, we need to connect the A terminal of the DMM to this terminal and the COM terminal to this resistor. The resulting schematic looks like this. As with voltage measurements, switching the terminals on the ammeter changes the sign on the measured current. Here's our circuit. Per the sign convention on the previous schematic, positive current leaves the voltage source and enters this terminal of this resistor. We want the current leaving the source to enter the A terminal of the DMM and the current leaving the COM terminal to enter the terminal of the second resistor. In order for us to do this, we need to disconnect these two resistors, put them in different rows of the breadboard. Then we can just connect the A terminal to the first resistor, the COM terminal to the second resistor, and we are getting about 0.025 amps of current through the combination. One final note on current measurement. There are fuses in a DMM which can burn out if too much current passes through it. This is the reason for the various current measurement settings on the DMM dial and ports. They allow different current levels to be measured without burning out a fuse. Most DMMs have settings and ports labeled A, milli A, or micro A. The setting on the dial should agree with the port into which the lead is plugged. The A port and setting allow the highest current levels but provide the least sensitivity. Currents in the milliampere, or thousandths of an ampere range, tend to simply show up as zero. The MA, milliampere, and mu A, microampere, or millionths of an ampere, provide greater sensitivity. They allow us to accurately measure relatively small currents, but they have fuses which will easily burn out at the higher current levels. Burnout fuses can be readily replaced, but, but it's inconvenient, so it's desirable to avoid this. In general, it's a good practice to first make your current measurement with the higher current setting. If this setting indicates a very low current, then switch to one of the lower current settings. Finally, let's talk about measuring resistance using a digital multimeter. To measure resistance, turn the DMM dial to the setting labeled with the Greek letter omega. The DMM leads should be plugged into the COM port and the volt ohm port, the same way as they were for voltage measurements. The leads of the DMM are then placed across the terminals of the device whose resistance we want to measure. There's no polarity or sign associated with resistance, so it doesn't matter which terminal each lead is applied to. Suppose we want to measure the resistance of this resistor. We can insert the terminals of the resistor into our breadboard as shown and place the DMM probes against the terminals of the resistor. The resistance is displayed on the DMM. 
This is an approximately 20 kilo ohm resistor. Now, if we have alligator clips on our probes, we can just hold the resistor directly with these clips. No breadboard is required. However, we want to make sure that we don't place ourselves in the circuit whose resistance is being measured. If we hold our resistor with our thumbs against the DMM probes, we're actually not only measuring the resistance of the resistor, but we're also measuring the resistance of our body. This 20 kilo ohm resistor is being registered as an approximately 17 and a half kilo ohm resistor. In this tutorial, we've provided a very brief introduction to the use of breadboards and digital multimeters. We only talked about voltage, current, and resistance measurement using DMMs. Your DMM will likely have other capabilities. This tutorial is not intended to be comprehensive. You need to read your DMM's user manual to familiarize yourself more completely with your DMM's features.